Hey, welcome to Revive Church and Revive Online. It's August, so that means we're on a break. We are having some screen free time after many months, I'm sure for all of you, of lots and lots of screens. We're encouraging those who gather with us on a Sunday and people who are part of our church family to take some time out, to spend time together if physically able, spend time with family, just rest. And Matthew 11 verse 28 to 30 in the message version says this, Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So we'd encourage you in during these three weeks of uh, no screen time to just really walk with him and uh, yeah, learn his unforced rhythms of grace. If you're watching this, then you are clearly here. <laughs> so if you're new to us or if you just can't get enough of Revive Online, then don't worry, we still got something for you. We're gonna give you um, a taste and a, a bit of a, one of the, the key messages from re lockdown. Um, also, we do have the previous two weeks or at the start of August, we've had um, Roy Todd, who's an area leader of AOG with Dream A Little More, so we'd encourage you to go back and watch that. Um, and if you wanna watch more, you can head over to our YouTube channel, which is linked here. So stay tuned for the service and the message um, from lockdown or click the link in the comments now to go and watch Roy Todd's messages So today I want to bring a message in line with this change in seasons entitled take your position You know right now on so many levels position is key. I'm not just talking physical position, but I'm talking our position in Christ. And I want to start by asking you this morning, do you know your position in Christ? For some of us, we may have taken a step and chosen to follow Jesus, to become a Christian, but maybe we haven't really considered our position as a result of that. For some of us, we may not have taken a position in Christ. We may not have chosen to follow him, or even know whether we believe in him. And for some of us, we know our position in him. And today, I believe God wants to remind us of that. So our position changes before God, if and when we choose to place our trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. Our position in Christ is our legal standing with God. God, the creator who made us to be in relationship with him but mankind chose to go their own way and through that and through our sin we became separated from him Jesus came and took the punishment for our sin and when we believe that and we choose to give over our lives to him and that restored relationship to him our position changes from lost to found from guilty to not from slave to friend, from debtors to free, from darkness to light. Nothing we can do gains that position. Ephesians 2, 7 affirms that it is from the riches of God's grace that our new status flows. So how do we define grace? A common definition is God's riches at Christ's expense. And another way to describe grace is the unmerited favour and kindness of God. Unmerited, we did nothing to deserve it. And a, part, a lot of Paul's letters, he writes many of them in the New Testament, they follow a theme of drawing a distinction between what God has done for us and what we are now called or encouraged to do in response to that. Ephesians is my favourite book in the Bible. And this is one of those letters by Paul. In it, he starts by writing to make us understand our position. It's almost like he says, come sit and learn your position before doing anything. And then in view of that position, he encourages us to live a life consistent with what Christ has given us. 
you know, I could just sit and read you all Ephesians for the rest of this preach. I'd be happy and you probably would be too. It's just amazing. But I want to pull out a few snippets to help us to understand our position. So in Ephesians 1 verse 3, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the will, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to this dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. And then down in verse 19, in the same um, chapter, chapter one, it says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honour at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Taking your position is according to Crew, which is a brilliant website, and we're going to put it on our resources page. And they have an article on this, on your position in Christ, and it's really worth a read. And this is what they say about taking your position. Becoming in experience who you already are as God sees you. Becoming in experience who you already are as God sees you. This is how God sees us. You know, when we take our position, when we choose to believe in Jesus and all that he did for us, God sees us as his children. We are reconciled to God. We are redeemed. We are brought near. We are given access. We are children of God, born again, new creations, adopted into his family. We are heirs. We are totally acceptable to God through Jesus. We are justified, just as if I'd never sinned. We are made righteous. We are sanctified. We're set apart. We are made perfect. We're accepted. We're forgiven. We are complete. We are united with Jesus. We have been crucified with him. We have died to our old life. We were buried, but then we were raised to this glorious new life. And we didn't just stay here. We ascended with Christ into the heavenly realms. And your position, therefore, if you have accepted Jesus, is seated in heavenly places. We are his, his gift, his bride, his inheritance, his possession. And we have God within us through the Holy Spirit. We are born of the Spirit, baptised in the Spirit. He lives in us. We are sealed by his Spirit. And there's more, there's more. He goes on to say in many different places that we are objects of his love, objects of his grace, of his power, of his faithfulness of his peace, of his encouragement, objects of his intercession, that we are on the lips of Jesus and he is ever interceding for us, standing in the gap and praying for us to the Father. We're assured of a heavenly home. We're heavenly citizens, members of his household. We have a heavenly inheritance. You know, we have this position that is beyond our understanding simply through grace because of his unending love not one jot of it is because we did anything to earn it it's a free gift and I want to encourage you this morning if you haven't taken that free gift 
and your position in Christ, if you haven't taken up that position, I want to encourage you to do so. And Ephesians 2, 8 reminds us of this gift. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. For those of us that have hopefully uh, taken that position, then I really hope that this served as a reminder of the glorious inheritance we have in Jesus, of our identity as children of God. And as a response to this, whether you're taking your position for the first time or whether you're just realising your position or whether you know your position, I want to encourage you to take some different positions in living for him you know, you've gotten to know God. He's getting you free. Now let's find our purpose and let's start making a difference. We need to respond in our positioning. First, we need to know that position in God, but then we need to be able to take our positions for different seasons of life. And I want to suggest some positions to take over this season of lockdown, but also of a new season at Revive. And the first position is of surrender. You know, in the later chapters in Ephesians, when it's talking about what, encouraging us what to do as a response to all the amazing things that God has done for us. Paul talks of our response to his amazing gift and he tells us to throw off our old sinful nature and the former way of life and let the Holy Spirit renew our thoughts and attitudes. It tells us to put on your new nature and that happens when we surrender our lives to God and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in a new way of living. We die to that old life and we're raised to a new life in him. That comes from a position of surrender. You know, right now when everything is so uncertain, to be able to surrender our lives into the hands of faithful God Almighty, I think is a really comforting thing. Take our position of prayer and authority. At the end of Ephesians, it tells us to put on the full armour of God and to stand firm. Friends, anything we accomplish in the natural world for God was first accomplished in the unseen world, the spirit realm. And that is where we battle. So I encourage you to take your position on your knees in prayer. Fight for the healing that this nation needs to see to come. Fight for the future of Revive Church, for us to bring hope to those who have never seen hope and faith to those who have never known faith. I want to encourage you to take your position of faith and courage. We have no reason to be afraid and our faith and courage in these times will shine brightly for Christ. Remember who you are. In him you are an overcomer. You have an eternal hope. You have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken and when all of this fades still we will stand firm with Christ because his kingdom will never fade. I want to encourage us also to take our position of service in church. It's in Ephesians that we hear of the gifts God gives to the church in the shape of people and their individual gifting. And we encourage you in this time to be seeking God to find out what your gifting is, what he has given you to contribute yourself to the church. We're asking you to take your God-given position and revive. I'm not talking about a name badge or a position that we give you but to be who God called you to be in the church. Take your lane. There's a quote that I've shared before by Jen Johnson and it says this, don't try to be seen. Don't try to make your gift happen. Just stay in your lane and serve. Do what God has called you to do. You will be seen when you need to, if you need to. David was in the fields off the grid and God sent the right people to go and find him. God sees you. And finally, to take our position of sharing. We have a hope. We have life. We have light. We see miracles. We have acceptance and sonship, peace and freedom. We have to share this with the world right now. Our world is tired and desperate for a breakthrough and we know the answer. So I want to encourage you to be sharing your hope with those around you through messages, sharing all of the online stuff that we're doing here. Let's share this hope that we have. Don't keep it to ourselves.
And finally, I just want to remind you of the positions that we've already looked at. Taking a position of being still, of stopping talking and starting listening, and also of praise to bring the breakthrough. So I'm going to set you some homework now. You've not had that before, have you? I want to really encourage you to find the book of Ephesians in the Bible. If you haven't got a physical Bible, you can Google it. You can find it online. There's, it's just everywhere. Just Google Ephesians and it will be there. And um, I just want to encourage you to read through Ephesians. And as you do, in the first few chapters, write down all of the things that God has given you. Write down your position in him. And then in the later chapters, write down all of the things that Paul encourages to us to do as a response to that call. So I'm setting you that homework. We'd love to see them, email them to us. But really, we just... Um, want to encourage you to be spending time in God's word this week so we're setting you that homework for Ephesians and it's also in the article that I mentioned earlier which will be on our resources page here's the link so I'm just going to finish with a little prayer now Jesus we thank you for all that you have done for us we thank you for the position that we can take because of what you did on the cross and I pray this morning if anyone is new to taking that position in or considering taking that position, that you would just show up wherever they are now, Lord, that you would just reveal yourself to them, Lord. And we pray for those of us who have been on this journey a while, Lord, would you help us to take new positions in you? Lord, would you help us to get our positions right in you for this time, to be surrendered, to stand firm, to fight, Lord, on our knees, and to also share this message of hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're going to look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired.